Hi, this is Andrea from the VX Rail GSE team. Dell published a DSA regarding uh, Dell EMC VX Rail security update for the Apache Log4j remote code execution vulnerability related to the CVE 2021 44228. On December 10, 2021, a critical remote vulnerability was published concerning the Apache Log4j library. VX Rail is impacted this vulnerability. Scrolling the KB, Please have a full readout of the KB. You can see the more details about the, the vulnerability, but as well, we're going to go on the workaround and mitigations. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about the VCSA, which relates to the VMware KB. The VMSA from the VMware contains all the workaround and details related to all the products affected. When we scroll down, we can identify the vCenter in this case. That's what we are interested in here and we have a specific KB with the workarounds. You can see that the KB is being constantly updated, so please have a readout to the latest version. So uh, there is a automated way to perform the workaround using a Python script, which is going to be covered in a separate video, but as well some manual workaround. In this video, we're going to talk about the 6.7 appliance workaround. When you scroll down, you can see what we're going to do. We're going to perform a workaround on the Vmon service, one on the secure token service, and one of the identity management service. Then we have to run a specific script for the analytics service and the CM service. The script, you can see already downloaded here. It's available on the VMware KB as an attachment. It will have to be copied on the vCenter appliance. Before performing any steps of this workaround, it is strongly suggested to take a snapshot of the vCenter and the PSC if to run in you know, vCenter and with external PSC. So um, just to avoid inconsistency in case of enhanced link mode and in case, for example, of VCF on the X-ray environment, we strongly suggest you to shut down the VM first and then take a snapshot with the power of VM. So we log on the host where the VM is running, we identify the VM and we shut it down. Once the VM is powered off, we can take an action. Snapshot, take a snapshot. We can use a Meaningful name. And take a snapshot. Once we confirm that the snapshot has been created correctly, we can power on again the VM and start to perform the workaround. First step is to apply the workaround on the Vmon service. So first step is to copy and make a backup of the Vmon Java wrapper Vmon file. Perform a copy. And the second step, we need to update the file using VI editor should be comfortable using VI. So in this case, we need to remove this uh, specific string at the end of the file and then insert the two new strings as per the KB. So this is what we find in the original file and this is after the update. So to perform the update, we can um, press ask and then shift capital letter G. So we can go at the end of the file. So first ask to go in mode and then shift plus G.
and we are at the end of the file. And now we can press DD to remove the letter, then press ESC again, then I to go in insert mode, and then finally semicolon W Q bank. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Press ask again, the D to remove the line. Press E, insert mode. Now I can copy the two strings, update the strings. Pass them, I check that everything is correct. Then I can press ask again. Right, quit, bang, and save the file. Okay. This point, I can restart all the vCenter services. So service control, dash dash stop, dash dash all. And I wait until all the services are stopped. And once all the services are stopped, we can restart them. And we wait, wait a while until all the services is going to be are going to be up and running. Once all the services are back up and running, and we can check using the status command, we can move on to the next step. The next step is to apply the workaround on the secure token service. So the service is running on the PSC. So if you have a setup where the vCenter and the PSC uh, with the external PSC, then you need to log on the PSC to perform this step. So we always perform a copy of the STSD file. So we log in on the our PSC, perform a copy, and we edit the file. In this case, you can see that the KB is suggesting you to reach around the row, um, row 266 near this, you know, string. So what we can do is that on VI, I you can, we can go on this specific line and look around. Two six six. In this case, we need to look at this section: start service, and specifically the KB asks you to insert a line just before the string. So this is the line that we need to add. back to our console. We identify the line and we can press ask, insert, and then insert the string. So press ask, then press E to insert, and then insert the string. Ask insert on insert mode and insert the string. And now we can save the file. Once we save the file, we can restart the service. Stop and start. And the service is now restarted successfully.
Now we need to perform the workaround on the identity management services. We perform a backup of the configuration file. Remember the service, in this case, I have an external PSC configuration, so I'm actually running it on the PSC. So this service is not running on the vCenter. I perform a copy and then I can edit the file. So the KB, if you follow it, request to look around the line 177 just before the string and insert this other string. As you can see here, highlighted in red, the string that needs to be added. So how I do that, I'll show you as well before. You can press ask, then you can select the line to go. In this case, 177. Once we identify where to go, we can press ask again, move the cursor, and then I to insert the string. So, okay. So I press ask. I want to select the row where to go, the line of the file where to go, 177. And I can have here what I'm looking for. So I need to insert the string just before that. I can press I, insert mode, paste the string. And then, and then finally press ask again to choose VI mode, semicolon, right quit bank to save the file. Once I save the file, it's now time to restart the services. I can do a stop. And then a start of the service. Okay. Last step is to patch analytics services and CM services. This workaround and this log has to be run as well on the vCenter, but as well on the PSC if you have an external PSC. So the first thing to do is download the file from the KB. You can scroll up to the KB and you can see the file here as attachments. So I already downloaded the file and I copy it over to my vCenter in this case. You can use, you know, WinSCP, for example, to copy it over. And as I mentioned, just remember that, you know, for WinSCP to work, you need to enable the bash shell. How to enable it? You can log in on the port 5480 on the, the vCenter itself. And on the access tab, you can see bash shell. In this case, it's enabled. So if not, if disabled, you can edit and disable. So once you have copied a file, you just need to run this Python script. So let's do it. I have my file here. I copied on the 10 folder in this case. I have the file here and I just execute the file with a Python command. Python remove. Just check if you have the right per permissions. If you don't have, you know, if you have any issues with permission, you can run a cmod plus x remove. So at least to give the permission to execute the script. And then we can write a Python with the script. As I mentioned, it's going to stop and start a lot of services. So just please bear mind some time to run that. We can see that it's, we can see that it's identifying the vulnera vulnerable files and restarting the service after applying the changes. We can see now that the service has started and the latest piece of the workaround has been completed. And finally, it's the time to verify the changes. So, we can check if the analytics, if we check on vCenter, we can check if the analytics services changes have been applied successfully, it should return zero. And the CM service changes, it should as well return zero. So the class has been disabled. And for example, if we want to look if SDSD is running, in this case, you know, it's running on the PSC service to see if the change has been successful, we can look. And for example, we can see that this particular format message, no lookups, it's actually true on SDS, on SDSE, and so on. So it worked. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day. Bye.